Welcome. Thank you so much for joining this orientation session, both to those of you who are here in real time and and those of you who may be joining by recorded video later. And as a reminder, I'll be doing basically the exactly the same session as what we are doing, what we'll be doing now, except at 6 p.m. And uh, my intent is it will be mostly the same session. I may not be recording it. I'll have to review the quality of this recording to see if I need to re-record any portion of it, but um, I'll take a look at it. Uh, so sometime before the 6 p.m., you'll uh, get a link to the recording and be able to see all this. Um, so welcome. <laughs> Let me, uh, so my name is Andrew Park. I'm your instructor for Astronomy 10. This is the announcement that went out early this morning for some definition of morning. Um, and I think you should have gotten one or two email from me um, um, uh, over the last week or so. And if you haven't, uh, that's one of those, some of the things that I want you to go over and make sure that everyone has, um, uh, everyone has uh, proper things to set up so that I can reach you and you don't miss important course information. Uh, quick explanation of the um, things you see in this uh, orientation session and things that you will see in future virtual class sessions is um, I have a two screen setup that uh, kind of helps me manage this online thing. <laughs> so you should see my main shared screen that uh, um, that's the screen that I'm kind of uh, looking at. And from time to time, you will see me looking off to the side. That's when I'm looking off to the side on the second screen that's off on the side. So um, I have a chat window on the side so that I can monitor the chat and uh, respond to any questions that people might have in the chat. And in fact, let me put my usual welcome message in the chat so that um, it gets, it, so the chat messages, once I start the recording, it gets captured in the recording. So let me just type in my usual welcome message. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining in this orientation session. If you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask or put your question into the chat window. Um, if you have, a, and one feature of the chat that I figured out like about a year ago that um, I think it's useful for me to point out to people is that if you have any questions that you prefer not to be recorded, uh, you can send it to me as a, a private message. Then, so right now I'm going to drag the chat message window into the main window so that you will see it. Um, and so, you know, right now don't send me any private message. Um, but for the most of the session, I'll be keeping this chat window in my second screen, and I'll be usually careful about dragging that window into this shared screen. And that's where I can see any messages that people have sent to me privately, and I can still see it, and I can respond to it. And so this uh, orientation session and in the future virtual class sessions, I really do believe in asynchronous online education that one of the biggest uh, advantage of online classes <laughs> pre-COVID-19 <laughs> was that it's, it's, it's flexibility, that people don't have to have a particular schedule to participate in the online class. So, so I want to make it as accessible as possible asynchronously. And that's the reason I record sessions like this. And when the sessions are being recorded, you have to balance the, balance the, the, making content available to everyone, regardless of restrictions to as to time. Uh, that's one interest. And the second interest is the, just the privacy interest, particularly of the people who are here in real time, because I do want people to be able to join in in real time and engage um, without <laughs> feeling like um, you have to put it all out there for everyone. So, um, so that's my setup. And at the beginning of every virtual class session, I'll kind of do, do a quick spiel of this. Um, this first session, I did a, a little bit longer than usual. Um, uh, so if there are any questions, please let me know, you, my real time folks. Or, you know, as you're watching this recording later on, if questions come up, do let me know and I can address it in future sessions. 
So, um, so we, before we started the recording, we did a quick intro, you know, I'm my Andrew Park, my, I'm your instructor, I guess, uh, and I had a quick intro here. And um, if you somehow want to know more about me, um, you can always, uh, I was making sure that right stuff are at the right places. Um, so on my faculty page, one of the, so we have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's one that I mostly manage. And um, this is really relates to course content. So you, non, most of them are not introduction about me, but um, in Physics 4C, I did talk about like research in physics. So, um, so if somehow you're interested, <laughs> there's more there, but um, it's, uh, I, I think I would like to spend most of the time here um, I guess I don't have a time here uh, talking more about uh, the thing that you are here for. One thing that I do really like from this is, oh, yeah, this <laughs> image. I think I used this photo in some profiles and stuff elsewhere. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, one of the striking things about when you do uh, scientific research, you have access to some high quality um, stuff that normally you wouldn't buy because it's so expensive. <laughs> this is a parabolic lens, uh, which I guess for this class relates to something called the spherical aberration that we'll briefly talk about in, I think, module two under tools of astronomy. Um, so you, you'll see some aspect of that. Uh, maybe I'll talk about that more then. Um, so, um, so I think that's in, enough of an intro for me. Um, so one of the purpose of this uh, orientation session is to make sure that all the technical issues are worked out. It's a kind of, um, it's one of the downside of online class, which is that sometimes when people struggle with the things that uh, I find out about those struggles too late. <laughs> so, um, and it's the kind of thing that I would have noticed much earlier, you know, face-to-face -face class because either people come to class and are uh, appear to be doing well or people are not in class. So I either drop people or, you know, I, I there's an intervention that uh, happens much earlier. So, one of the things I want to make sure is I want to make sure that I can reach people. And um, that's what this couple important notes is about. And um, so if you are using parallel email regularly, then I think you're all set. You should have already received a couple messages from me over the last week. And that's your verification that everything is set up correctly and you don't really have to worry about it. Now, somehow in case you haven't received any of those messages and you are somehow you still reach the disorientation session or the video. This is uh, my quick instruction on how you should uh, make sure that you are reachable by email. So, um, so this is, I guess, for people who use another email account regularly, you can actually forward your Peralta email. So if you log into your student center, I'm gonna log into my faculty center. Um, and I hope I don't have anything in my email that, um, that you know, that implicates anything confidential. I, I think I don't, but so, you know, you find the Outlook, go to Outlook and, and after it's logged you out, log back in and, um, so there's a setting within Outlook where you can afford the email. Uh, by the way, my screen looks a little bit different because I use dark mode. Um, if you don't use dark mode, you will see something that's closer to this. Um, search for forwarding. And uh, so this is where you can uh, forward your email. You can, um, so <laughs> this is my main email account. In fact, all my email, both the work and everything comes to this eventually. Um, and so, so you, you can just send it to my Peralta email, it'll or get forwarded to the right place. And I really strongly do recommend that you make sure that you have something set up that works for you where uh, 
if someone tries to reach you by Peralta email, you will uh, see the email within 24 hours. Um, so that it applies to this class and it applies to other classes. Any important course announcements, they are set up to be routed through your, um, through your Peralta email. So uh, make sure that either it's, a, if it's your main email account, great you know, use it as your main email, but in the likely case that it's not, make sure that it's forwarded to the one that you actually do check regularly. So, um, so that's that. And the second thing in the context of this course is the notification setting. So, um, so there are certain way in which this class is set up, for example, uh, announcements like this, I use this almost like email. So when I posted this at 1.20 a.m., uh, I hope it reached you at the right time frame as if I emailed you. And for that to work properly, it actually relies on certain settings in your Canvas. So in your notification setting, you can reach that through your account profile and then notification. And Canvas keeps changing stuff. There may be some course level notification. I don't know, I haven't used it before, so I'm not gonna <laughs> opine on that. Um, but in your notification setting, there are certain things that I strongly recommend that you set as notify immediately that allows you to, for example, I receive notification of course announcements like this. Um, if you had it as any other setting, you might not have seen this until like 8 p.m. today. So, <laughs> so, um, so an announcements, announcement messages, they are under this one, new announcements in your course. So I strongly recommend that you set this as notify immediately so that uh, when I post something as announcement, it kind of, it, it reaches you in the same time scale that an email would have reached you. And, um, and the other two things that I would uh, strongly recommend is the conversation message. That's for new inbox messages. So most of course related communication, individual one-on-one -on -one communication, I'm going to be using Canvas messaging system. It, it's kind of an easier way to organize things than email. And if you set this so that it's notified immediately, then it goes to your email inbox. So Canvas messages are like email. And um, so th that I recommend that you set as notify immediately. And the third setting that um, it took me like a semester or so to figure out, it um, it's submission comment. So this is particularly useful for me um, in the context of grading and giving you feedback on your work. And uh, for the purpose of organization, it was useful to me to leave it as a comment on your submission. And then I figured out that for some people, they didn't have this notification setting. So people were not seeing those comments for quite some time. So now I recommend that for submission comment that you set it as notify immediately. So those three things, um, there's a very particular way I'm using it and I kind of, I'm using them in a way that I more or less expect that you have it set up as notify immediately. And you do have a choice and freedom not to set it up that way. You just have to know that you may be getting uh, delayed notification or no notification at all. So, you know, that's a, your choice to make. And if you do make that choice, you should uh, um, watch out, be more vigilant. And there are certain other things that I think would be useful for you to also turn on notification. And the, the biggest thing is discussion new discussion topic in your course. There are certain things in this class that I'll be posting as discussion. In fact, a recording for this, I'll be posting it as discussion. And if you set this as notify immediately, then, um, then you will uh, get a notification of new uh, recordings posted. Um, there's a, I guess that was the fourth thing. There's a fifth thing that where I, so my own setting is to notify immediately. In fact, you can kind of see here, my bias is to basically for everything have a notify immediately, except for the things that started to bother me, like all submissions. I used to have this as notify immediately and it was um, 
it was so annoying because when students were submitting anything, I had to get a notification. So now it's a daily summary, except for the late submission. Late submissions, I get notified immediately. Um, so, so that is my own preference. You don't need to have your, the same preference as me. Um, one thing that I do recognize that for a lot of students, it's, uh, uh, it gets annoying if you have this as notify immediately because you may be taking other classes and sometimes, you know, so I don't have this requirement, but a lot of other online instructors have this requirement, you know, for like a graded discussion, you have to uh, post once, reply twice. And if you get notification for every one of those replies, it's like 60 different notifications for one class. And gets super annoying. So I do recognize that some people may have turned this, have this turned this down. And one thing that I do know that, that it affects is with the announcements, um, sometimes I will reply to my own announcements. And I do know uh, from students telling me that that's what happens, that uh, you may not be getting this immediately and that's perfectly fine. I um, So this was kind of a, a demonstration one that's why I did it but most well almost all well all the time if I if it's something that I want you to receive immediate notification of I wouldn't post it this way because I recognize that for a lot of people you might not you might not want to set your notification setting in a way that you get a notification for every single announcement or discussion reply so um, so, so don't you know? Don't worry about missing out these messages because if it's something that's time sensitive, I will post it as a new announcement so that um, so that that's only controlled by this uh, only by this preference. So, so that's really the most uh, important thing in this orientation that. Um, that you should have your, uh, um, and as I said, a couple important things. You should have the settings are set up so that uh, so that I can reach you, and, um, and, and people who are here in real time, <laughs> obviously you are able to get this announcement somehow, and you are here. Thank you for being here, and um, and I'll be watching us. So it uh, in the people tab, I in, with the instructor access, I have access to. Uh, you know, when people access the course, how long people access the course. And uh, in these first few days are the time when I watch out for people who haven't been on the Canvas course and I'll try to reach out to you. So um, so I may be pointing you pointing you to this recording so that, um, so, you know, when you when and if you get to this recording, just to make sure you follow these instructions and make sure that you are reachable in a more easy way than me calling up people. <laughs> so, I think that was the first item. Um, any questions from my real-time participants? Good, <laughs> thank you. Oh, one thing I should clarify, and I'll uh, try to clarify each time. Um, we did these recorded online sessions. Um, I tend to speak nonstop, and um, and and you know that. It's not the teaching best practice sometimes, especially when you're teaching in person. Uh, one of the first things you learn as a teacher is to shut up, <laughs> give people time to either think of questions or respond. And in, in an in-person class that works well, because uh, if you haven't talked for a while, like for 30 seconds to a minute, people get uncomfortable and start like talking. And, I found that in the online session, it doesn't really work. Uh, it's a, a different type of interaction. So when I'm silent, it, I don't think it really makes people feel, it doesn't make people feel uncomfortable in the good way where people, <laughs> you know, it encourages people to um, uh, interact more. So, so what I've chosen to go with in these online sessions is uh, to minimize the dead air. That's, I think, a broadcasting industry term. Um, you know, in broadcasting, you are not supposed to have that air. You are not supposed to have times of silence when you are not transmitting anything. So, so in this, especially in the recorded portions, I will tend to be kind of talking nonstop. <laughs> and what I really want to emphasize and make sure that it's not misunderstood is um, I do want you to know that I am seeking uh, 
I'm seeking feedback. I'm constantly soliciting questions. And um, in this online setting, you have at least two, two different ways you can ask. You can always amuse yourself and ask. Um, it, that uh, is, in fact, the right thing to do, especially if I'm going too quickly, if I've said something that's confusing and it looks like I'm moving on, then, you know, unmute, interrupt, ask, that's one. And the other is, um, which really works well with me talking nonstop, is you can put a question in the chat. I have a second window where I'm monitoring the chat window. I will see it eventually and, um, <laughs> and I can address it. And if somehow the question you have, if you don't feel comfortable asking it, knowing that it'll get captured in the recording for everyone to see, then you can send it to me as a private message. Um, like a, this button will glow orange to let me know that there's something new, but it won't actually show me what the message is. I have to look at my second screen to see what that private message is. So, um, so, um, so please, even if I'm just uh, talking on nonstop, <laughs> to know that I am looking for questions. So to interrupt, to do ask questions by chat, and uh, so don't let my nonstop talking be a disincentive or discouragement to, to questions. So with that clarification, hopefully. Uh, uh, so let me go through the remainder of the things. I want to do a bit of a course demo because uh, there are certain way the course is set up that um, I, every semester there's a few people who um, get confused with a certain way Canvas does things. And um, so I want to highlight it and uh, capture it in recording here so that I can send the recording to people when I get those questions that I usually get each semester. So I'm going to do this as a test student so that, um, so that I can show, I see what you see as a student and I can show you um, what you will see as a student. So this is the uh, test student view. And I hope you kind of notice immediately certain things that are, um, uh, that look different. So, you know, when I'm on this instructor view, you see all these bunch of other sidebar things that I've turned off in the uh, for the students. Like you don't see a link to assignments menu. <laughs> you don't see a link to pages menu. And the biggest reason for that is because this course is designed to be viewed through modules. Anything that you have to pay attention to, anything you need to know, it'll be in modules. So that's how you should do, <laughs> work through the course. So, um, so, so, um, so that's why the modules button is enabled and nothing else is because, um, because I've had these uh, problems in the past where, um, and so before I instituted these things, you know, I had the people who were just going straight to assignments and um, they didn't know that there were quite a bit of course resources available to help them with the assignments. And they were struggling. They were sending me all these questions, which I was happy to respond, but you know, I don't, my response is not immediate real time, except in these sessions. So it's, uh, um, it, and, and it took me a bit of a back and forth to realize that, oh, this student never saw all those course resources that are there to help, that are meant to help them with the assignments, the, the things that I've seen people struggle. So, um, so I put in something called a module requirement. And that's what, um, within this screen, that's what basically grays out all these other things. And, um, so, so I put in those module requirements and I turned off the assignment link so that people are not, you know, um, tempted to follow links that they, um, that they can't um, use anyway. So, uh, so <laughs> those links are not there. And now having done that, there are still places where Canvas will send you into misleading places. And the biggest uh, place where that this leading thing comes in is in this to-do list. And I don't think there's anything I can do to turn it off. Um, so it's just gonna be there. I'll just highlight some of the ways in which this list 
might be useful. And some of the ways where um, it's going to mislead you. So I, when you are misled, I want you to know properly how to come back. So um, some of the things that this is good for, it kind of puts uh, the announcement in the list here. So this only shows the most recent announcements, just the one. So um, like uh, this pre-semester message, if you somehow missed that, then it's in your to-do list. Great, <laughs> you can go take a look at that. Um, so, so it's good for that. Um, and does it clear it when I view it? No, it doesn't. So you'll have to manually clear it after viewing it. So I, I think uh, the announcement messages being in the to-do list, I think that's great, you know, you can see that. Now, where it'll mislead you are with the links to the assignments because um, this will, um, you know, this will tell you, oh, the next thing to do is participate in graded discussion. And you the click on that and go to that and you will see this. And uh, this uh, could be very confusing to people who are seeing this for the first time. I think maybe COVID-19 has helped with that because so many students are by now more familiar with the Canvas and online education in general. But um, I used to get questions about things like this all the time, like, oh, when are you going to unlock the discussion? And <laughs> my response was, hey, I haven't locked it. Or if it's locked in any way, it's locked through these compilation prerequisites. It's locked through module requirements. So when you, actually, when you are here, um, if you read the message carefully, you can figure out what you should do. Oh, you should uh, do this first. In fact, this is the only live link. So you must view this Canvas orientation page to uh, unlock this, and then you can go on to this. Because right now, if I try to go into here, it'll uh, like you know it won't show me because it's locked because I haven't done this yet. So. Within the to-do list, that's really the biggest thing. Uh, even though this will provide you with the links to the, with the direct links to the assignment, until you clear the module requirement, um, you don't actually get access to those things. It, you know, it's part of some module. And it, when it says it hasn't been unlocked yet, I want to be clear, it's, it's not locked in the sense that I'm preventing you from accessing it. It's uh, locked in the sense that you have to do these things first. Um, so, so I want to want you to highlight this so that when uh, this to do list misleads people, that you can <laughs> point you to this video and say, "Hey, um, this to do list. I don't really. Uh, it's between. I don't recommend using it." and um, being aware of a certain quirks when, when and if you are using it. And um, the other thing that used to be an issue, I don't think it will be as much of an issue this semester because um, sometimes, so, you know, each semester, uh, my goal is to update the entire course before the start of the semester. And um, sometimes I'm there, sometimes I'm not. Um, for this semester, I'm updated all through module four. I think I'm all okay through module four. It's all updated, but uh, modules five and six, I haven't updated it yet. And these things I have to update it. So um, sometimes the, so within modules, you can clearly see it. Uh, when you get access to this placeholder module, it'll kind of tell you um, what the, what these other items are about and um, this is really the reason I don't like the to-do links. It's that it places thing, these things out of context. And um, one of the things that you are supposed to do in online classes, put things in context. And so, so, uh, so, uh, so sometimes the to-do might uh, present you with outdated information as in, so right now here, um, this, uh, this assignment is actually going to change. Um, but somehow if I'm <laughs> behind and haven't changed it uh, long before July 15th, you might see this item on the to-do and I haven't updated it yet. Um, so this semester, I don't think it'll be as big of a problem because most of the course is set. It's all been updated. So, so that particular aspect probably is not a big issue. But 
I would just say in general, the way this course is designed to be viewed is through modules. And I think I say that on the front page here. You, know, you can click on start here to get started. And um, start here, it actually just takes you the very first module item. So you might, it takes you the canvas orientation and stand resources and you might use it uh, first a couple of days. And after a while, you probably want to go directly to modules. So, yeah, this course is best viewed through the modules. So, okay, so let me go to <laughs> start here. You can start, definitely start there. And um, this is kind of um, um, template thing uh, within Peralta. So, you might have seen all this before, then, you know. I recognize that you have seen it, uh, read this caution that's I think new for this course and um, just click on next. With the module requirements, you will see different uh, types of module requirements. So these pages that I'm kind of not even reading through, um, they have something called view requirement and view requirement lets you do basically what I did now as in kind of skip through pages without paying any attention to um, what's been there. And uh, that's where this requirement comes in. So let me go to modules page so that I can show you what the screen looks like. So within the modules page is where you see um, the module items and the requirements there in this fine print here. When you fulfill the requirement, it changes to tap past the tense. Um, these items have a view requirement. And what that view requirement means is, um, it's basically what I did, you know, that these pages were loaded in your web browser. And I would like you to read it. I would like you to know that what's in there, but, um, but you know, at the end of the day, I don't have a mechanism to force you to read it, so. <laughs> So, so, you know, that's what the view requirement represents. I do like it to know that th those pages are there. And um, once you know that they are there, I leave it up to you what to do with it. I would like you to read it. Now, mark it as done is the next level of requirement because instead of just uh, being able to um, flip through, clicking on the next button over and over, these are the pages where it'll stop you for a bit uh, with this. <laughs> that um, because this page contains a specific tasks to be completed, I want you to make sure you slow down, read the page, and do the tasks under to-do. And uh, not every page will have a to-do list. Um, some pages will be more about a more extended set of information, and uh, there will be some description about Mark has done within those pages or assignments. So here, um, this is basically what was in the couple important notes in the announcement. So I really want you to make sure that you set up your settings so that you are reachable. <laughs> so once it's been all done, you have to mark it as done. Um, there's that button there. It's a toggle button. You can mark it as done and then you know mark it as undone. Um, it, that might be, uh, there are contexts where that feature of toggle might be useful. If you are using it for your own purpose to kind of keep track of things that you've done, keep track of things that you still need to do, um, so yeah, so this um, is keep going. I think uh, my open math assignment, um, let me cover that in a later virtual class session. Uh, you don't have any my open math assignments that are due today or tomorrow. So um, uh, the only thing to say that, um, so these, uh, you know, I'll just leave that uh, for the, um, uh, for a future virtual class session with just one note, which is, I think, uh, yeah, this course uses many advanced features of Canvas LMS and learning tools, interoperability, integration of external tools. And it, this is a caution about mobile Canvas app. It's really buggy. Um, so I guess this semester I haven't specifically checked and I'll check this every semester. In the, even as recently as last semester, there were issues with the, using mobile Canvas app and using some of the LTI tool. Uh, there were certain behaviors that it wasn't supposed to do things that way. And because of those weird, weird behaviors confused people, my kind of 
go to advice is don't use mobile Canvas app. You can complete this course on a mobile device. You just have to use web browser. Mobile versions of Chrome and Safari and Firefox work really well. Um, and so, so that's what I would recommend. Now, if you somehow Canvas app is better workflow for you, then you can use it. Um, just to be aware that if uh, the course behaves weirdly, then you probably want to check it in the web browser because it could be a mobile Canvas app thing that, I mean, you know, I, I will help you troubleshoot, but beyond that, like I have no ability to fix mobile Canvas set. Uh, Canvas really makes it hard to file bug reports. So, um, so anyways, um, these are all few requirements. Um, you, you are welcome to read through it. <laughs> all that information is there. Okay, so now I'm finally here and I can finally reply. And I think I will do, um, and you know, this is under to do. So now if you were to click on the to do link, it would actually work because you've unlocked everything. And um, let me do something different this time. And I will actually do, uh, you know, I said, I'll do my own introduction below soon, later tonight. Um, oh, that might be my old message. <laughs> Let me do it now. So uh, I'll I'll do this test to student, and actually for and uh, for a um, uh, later orientation session in the evening, I'm gonna reset this account, and I'll just uh, do it twice. Um, so by the way, um, these items have a contribute requirement, and contribute requirements are super strict. Um, so it's a uh, one of those things where me with the instructor account access, I can kind of clear things for test to student, except for this contribute requirement. I really just have to contribute as test to student. I have no way to clear that. Um, so, so let me reply. Um, I'll just type in my brief message. <laughs> my name is Andrew Park and I your instructor for master 10 this is a semester. Um, okay, I guess it can't be too long. I'll just say, um, yeah, why are you taking classes? Um, <laughs> oh, uh, and my preferred name is Andrew. Um, it, it's actually not my legal name, but it's the name I prefer to go by. Um, I am teaching this class, not taking it, obviously. Um, and yeah, so I would just have to say, um, uh, so I'll just share briefly about things I found uh, really enjoyable about teaching on online class. Uh, I have been teaching online since uh, 2016, physics 10, um, physics 10. Um, and I've taught this class online uh, a couple uh, previous times, uh, summer 2020 and winter intercession 2020. Um, um, the, the, um, the thing I like most about teaching on online class is flexibility. Uh, that, so I guess this is something that applies more for pre-COVID times, um, but that is, um, um, one of the biggest uh, attractors uh, for uh, for students uh, who uh, who choose to take asynchronous online class, and I will share that the same applies for us to instructors. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, um um amount uh, amount of work is any less. If anything, it takes more work to teach online asynchronous class, uh, but I can choose to do that work any time of the day. Um, and 
I guess it, for summer, I'm not doing anything else. So it's not as though I need the flexibility, but during regular semesters, it, it's helpful. Sometimes there are other meetings, uh, uh, other college meetings that I need to attend. And when I'm teaching online, I have more <laughs> flexibility. Um, oh, and, oh, and one other thing I like teaching about, uh, I like, about teaching an introductory class is the, the diversity of uh, people who take introductory classes. Um, students in, for example, physics 4C uh, tend to be following a very particular track, which is not a bad thing, but you know, it, uh, it reduces diversity somewhat. <laughs> uh, I, I enjoy uh, hearing about um, what people uh, look forward to in an introductory science class like this one. Um, uh, if you have, to, yeah, I think I answered that kind of, I've been teaching online since 2016. Uh, I, I will say, um, uh, and. Um, thank you, and um, let me know if any questions. Uh, this is being posted under test student account uh, during one of the um, online orientation sessions. Uh, I'll let this stand as, uh, as my intro. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, this is the kind of thing, and um, <laughs> yes, some, some of the people who have posted are here. Thank you for joining in real time here, as well as uh, posting here. And um, yeah, and it, really the purpose of this assignment, and it's actually due tonight, uh, is to make sure that everyone can access the course. And if you were able to successfully reply here, that means you kind of got through the module requirements one way or another. So, um, so this assignment, I use it so that um, I can, after midnight, I can look to see who haven't completed it. I can uh, reach out by email and at some point I'll be calling people uh, because I need to drop people who are not participating. <laughs> so that's why this assignment is there at the very beginning and that's why it's due to, tonight so that, uh, so that I can follow up relatively quickly. Again, the kind of the biggest downside of online classes, sometimes it takes me a long time to figure out when someone has been having difficulties. Um, so I want you to finish through this honor code pledge because this is, uh, again, <laughs> one of the things that's uh, placed at the very beginning of the course so that if there are any issues that get worked out at the beginning of the semester rather than, um, you know, after one or two weeks in. Um, so this one is due tomorrow. So you can do it tonight or you can do it tomorrow. Um, and I, I guess with a test student, I can do this. I can, um, I can take it as a test student and I will uh, show you what you should expect to see after you've taken it. And I'll show you a kind of brief cross section of, what I do, um, what I do after I've, uh, when I see the submission, uh, this honor code pledge, it's graded manually, it's all reviewed manually. And there are certain things to set up here. So, but in terms of what you do on the student side, it's super simple, you know, you open it. The purpose of this quiz is to ensure that every student has read this and, uh, you know, that's really all I want you to do. <laughs> so I just want you to type this text. Um, and so, you know, it's uh, the only way I could think of where I can ensure that someone has read a particular block of text so that they can't later say, oh, I didn't know that was against the rules. <laughs> you typed it, you knew it, what the rules were. So let me type this here. I test the student will uh, make 
submissions that represent my own work and I share my own work and solutions with anyone else. And you are seeing that I'm correcting typos if I make it and um, typos are fine. It's reviewed manually. And I mean, if you have a, a perfect, if you are good typist like me and you are correcting your typos, then that's fine. Um, uh, it's, uh, um, you know, don't introduce typos that you weren't actually making. Um, <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, you don't worry too much about minor typos or, um, or some misspellings. Uh, it, uh, it's not something that I look for when I manually review it. Really, um, what I pledge this on my honor. What I look for when I grade this is that it looks like it's uh, typed by you. And, and and that you type the most of it. Uh, if you want to change some portions of it, you can, um, but you should uh, type uh, most of this. Um, so <laughs> sometimes people just type your name and um, then, you know, I would get back to them, hey, you have to type the whole text, you, you know, follow the instructions, you can just type your name. So typed it. And this question is here so that there's a mechanism for you to automatically progress. This question gives you two points. And the way the module requirement is set up here is you have to score some minimum amount of points. And this is the item that will give you that minimum amount so that you can, uh, so that you can progress before I've had a chance to grade this manually. So let me make sure that I can progress. Um, yeah, good. Uh, there have been instances in the past where the gradebook setting was weird and it wouldn't let me progress. So, um, so let me try to do this. Um, let me set this up off the screen so that I'm not sharing uh, people's things. Um, let's see here. So I will show you briefly what I look at uh, when I'm grading that uh, honor code pledge assignment. So on my second screen, I'm just going to my, going to the speed grader view for that assignment. And I'm just gonna scroll to the test student item so that I'm not sharing anyone else's score or anything. So when I grade it, this is what I see. Uh, I see, you know, the questions, I see the submission and, um, and I review it. And if uh, it looks off or uh, weird, maybe, you know, someone just typed in their name, then what I can do here is I can actually zero out the score. So um, not zero just for this, but I can adjust the whole thing down to zero. That, that, <laughs> that'll, that's the mechanism that will ensure that people uh, complete this honor code pledge properly. Uh, for the test to start, all this looks fine, so I won't and do that, I'll just to say, uh, so you know, that. <laughs> so so that's uh, what it should be when at, at the end when everyone has uh, done it um, 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 properly. And yeah, and it's got this uh, view logo thing. Sometimes useful, sometimes not. Um, that, I don't mind that you know that I have access to this. Sometimes I look at it, sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not, it, you know, it's not like <laughs> the whole, yeah. So uh, that someone started viewing it and it, I can imagine there are other types of quiz where this could be um, pertinent information. This course is designed so that this sort of thing is not relevant. Later on, when you do timed assessment for this class, you will, um, timed assessment will be open book. So if you stopped viewing the particular page and you looked at the textbook, hey, the rules allow that, so it's fine. Um, but I'll talk about timed assessment later on, uh, later in the week. But um, so anyway, so that's uh, kind of the orientation stuff. Uh, let me see here. I guess um, some of this module one stuff, maybe I'll talk about it in a virtual class session. I think uh, what I'm thinking at the moment is to hold a virtual class session tomorrow uh, at 6 p.m. And that'll be the time when I can go over 
some of the modules. Um, oh, one thing that I should uh, uh, capture in the recording is what the virtual class sessions look like. So when, as you are working through the modules, you, uh, by the way, these are not published for a reason. I will talk about that later, maybe tomorrow. Um, so I think I have links here. Uh, let me see if uh, it's uh, in one of these module pages. So one of the reasons I started doing virtual class session almost two years ago, before COVID-19, um, was when I started teaching online for um, physics, I guess my engineering physics class, I. Um, it was hard to keep making video resources for the class. So the virtual class session is kind of the context where I can naturally uh, cover some content that's not already adequately covered. So, um, so that's one of the reasons I started doing virtual class session. And yeah, I guess it's not really done anywhere here. Oh, you know what? I think for module one, I actually linked it from here. Um, so there's an unposted discussion, <laughs> this one, which I'll post. Um, let me post it uh, this afternoon. So I'll post it this afternoon. And these recordings were made as part of a virtual class session. So that's some of the things I do during virtual class session. I do some of the demonstrations like this. And, um, and uh, it's... Uh, uh, I recorded and sometimes it's a uh, if it's uh, reusable if it's useful for another semester then I will you know edit it and make it available um, more publicly in this way and later on when you are working on like the module and assignment uh, you will see uh, you will see other videos that kind of give you some homework help particularly with the calculation questions. That's some of the other things I do during virtual class session. Because some of these things, it's just much easier to demonstrate you know, on video like this than in writing. So, um, so, so, um, so yeah, that, uh, I, sorry, I kind of rambled on a little too much. So we are out of time, but um, <laughs> so, so I'll try to hold a virtual class session tomorrow and um, it could be an opportunity to cover some of these. I guess I didn't quite get to, um, I, I think I did this more or less already. Uh, this is the portion that I didn't get to and I, I want to cover some of this uh, tomorrow because I think module one is kind of an introductory thing. We start out from a perspective of someone who's just uh, looking at the night sky and, um, and the, oops. Sorry, I mean, this, you are not gonna see this. They are not published yet. Um, and some of the things that you see here, it's, uh, uh, I think it's, um, I mean, the slides here uh, kind of try to give you that sense of that observation, but I think it, uh, um, it works out better when there's an actual interactive thing that simulates a real world observation more closely. It's still not the same as the real thing, but it's closer than slides. Okay, so I think that's uh, everything. Um, if there are any questions that people want to ask on recording, I'm happy to answer. If not, <laughs> I'm gonna start the recording here, saying goodbye to people joining by recording the video. And I'll stay online for a little longer, like 10, 20 seconds, in case there are other questions people had that you, um, maybe, so in case you did had questions that you don't want to ask on recording. so. So, uh, so with that saying goodbye to people joining by recording the video, uh, I will 